Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the text-based adventure side of Novel AI. Now when I first started playing with Novel AI, this was the item that I probably spent the most time goofing around with. I absolutely loved the text-based adventure tool because you could basically adventure anything if you gave it enough context. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to set up a pretty straightforward little mystery kind of a game. And we're basically going to run with it and kind of show you how you can kind of add things to your story as you're playing through it. So when you first start this raw, if you were to come over here and just press control, enter and let it run, uh, the interior of the restaurant is dimly lit. You sit at the round table in the center of the room waiting for your guests to arrive. The place is much nicer than the usual diner. So we already have something we can run with. And again, I can press Alt R and I can say something like this. You're in a low windowless brick building with concrete floors and metal shelves with dust equipment. There are no windows and the only light from the ceiling fixture in the center of the room. So now that's a pretty good setup. I like this. I like this. I like this a lot. So uh, one of the things we're interested in doing here is uh, if there's anything that we need to establish as far as our story goes, uh, one of the things we can do here is, for example, is um, uh, your name is, let's call him Scott, Scott of the Antarctic. Um, you are a private detective trying to find um, a missing person named uh, Lord Riley. Why not? That sounds pretty good. So now we have a little bit of memory that's going to be kind of up here somewhere inside of our context as we're generating this. So let's see here. A fixture in the center of the room. Okay, I like that. Um, look around. Look at the shelves. So we can go ahead and uh, type in what we want to do here. We'll look at the shelves. Shelves are mostly empty. A few items rusted, breaking, or such bad shape you can tell that there's a door leading out of the room. Um, walk to the door and check the lock. Check the handle. Check the handle. We'll just go ahead and do something nice and simple like that. Okay, so they say the door is locked and um, you cannot open it, which is a little concept, a little, a little difficult to work with here because as you probably observed here that this uh, brick building here, um, we're trapped in this room, so now we can't escape. So again, people can take this in different ways. Now, since this is an old school choose your own adventure game, remember everything here is truly, genuinely random. So one of the things I can do here is in my memory here, um, you are carrying a set of professional lockpicks. I uh, use my lock picks on the door lock. I'm trying to find the keyhole. All right, so I'm just going to let it run rather than continue. I'll press Control Enter. What do you mean the clock doesn't open? Alt R. All right. Take several tries. You're now trying to unlock the door. I'm just going to say unlock the door. Ha <laughs> ha! Got it. So you can see now I'm carrying some lock picks in my pocket. I also I can kind of take a look at this thing. Um, open the door and peer into the hallway. Like the word generators. Okay, interesting. So we definitely got kind of an old machine right there. Um, one of the things I would love to do here is uh, you can see it appear into the hallway. Hallway with the occasional red glow. So we probably have some lamps or something along the ceilings. Uh, there's all sorts of different things we could do here. And uh, one of the kind of fun things that you can actually push here is if you hit the star and you press enter, it creates, oh, <laughs> it creates a random item. So in this case, it randomly decided I head down the hallway to approach your realist on the roof of a very tall building. Um, no, <laughs> let's try that one again. Control enter, let it run. It's a wide enough for two people walk shoulder to shoulder. Uh, continue down the hallway, uh, heading towards the sound of the machinery. Oh, interesting. All right, uh, inspect the computer machines and computer banks. Why not? So old that they are completely dead. The controls on the control board in some foreign language you can't understand them. You see an open hatch in the back wall. Okay, so again, we can just run with this. And the reason that this is so cool is we can now run through and start adding components to our story as we go. So one thing that I like to do uh, when I'm using this particular tool is I like to come over here and I like to go ahead and dial in anything that we need to know. Um, for example, uh, we've discovered, uh, we discovered, uh, you discovered old computers, computers, uh, the spaceship. So one of the cool things I do can do here is uh, now I can do something fun like this. Um, show inventory. <laughs> and you can see it'll actually remember because I did this, that these are all the common items that I have. The door is closed. I wait this little bit. Remember at any time we can actually come in here and um, adjust things. And one of the things that makes these tools so incredible is it also has the ability to say as well as edit our story directly. Uh, for example, I can come in here and say, 
you hear footsteps behind you. Uh, hide behind the computer banks. So now what's going to happen here is it'll try to work with the context to just give it and did it. Uh, no, 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 they come closer. So then carrying a large ball, large box. Oblivious. All right, so that's cool. We can say, sneak up behind the man and yell, freeze. He raises his hand slowly. Now, of course, one of the cool things is we can switch to say mode and we can say, what are you? Whoops. And again, if you make a boo-boo like that, that's not nothing. Oh, nothing. Yeah, that, that's a... Uh, then what are you doing with the box, you ask? Now, notice the story sometimes will kind of get a little outside of oh, what you've defined already and start to run with it. Just kind of put it down here. He points to the door next to the hatch. Now, of course, we can run with it and say what's behind, what's inside the hatch. <laughs> I can say what is your name. All right, Jack. So now one of the cool things now is that when we do develop something that could be relevant for the story, I can now add that to our lore book. So for example, if I come over here, press control, right click, I can now go ahead and generate lore. This person is a person, kind of a thing like that. And what it will try to do, and again, it's going to generate this dynamically. It's all muscular. He loves an avid hunter, da -da, skill hunting. His fatest passion is fossils, dinosaurs, a Pete paleontologist. Oh, I like that. Uh, one of the things you got to remember when you're doing lore books, though, is you want to make sure you're doing this. Um, let's see. What is your name? I'm Jack. Uh, now, the cool thing here is that we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we can say, hi, hey, Jack. Mind opening that door? Oops, I always make that mistake. Actually, I do mine. Oh, all right. And why is that? Again, remember, this is all generative AI. Mm. All right, fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Again. Yep. Hatch and depress. Now, one of the things you can keep in mind here, uh, the, the side, uh, the button that opens it. Now, one of the cool things is there was nothing in here that suggests that there was a button on the side of the hatchway. But because we've added this little detail to pressing the button that opens it, we basically said, hey, story, I don't care. I would like to um, go this way. And our, um, see, that wasn't so bad. I could do one of those sort of things like that and make my little kind of chunk. <laughs> Now, notice here that it uh, goes ahead and says uh, these kind of contexts, they're like this. Grumbles, but says nothing. Uh, why don't you go in first, Jack? Ah, I did it again. Uh, no, I don't like that at all. So that is not the uh, piece we're going to do here. So I'll just go ahead and uh, regenerate. Uh, but I'm closing the hatch. If I'm not back in five minutes, get the hell out of here. This place is dangerous. <laughs> Interesting. But you can see here that as we're working through our store here, we have the ability to kind of sneak in and drop little things here and there that would allow us to kind of customize the direction our story is while maintaining the kind of randomness that a lot of people really enjoy in these kind of stories. Now, one of the things you have to watch out for is uh, you reach, uh, let's say, for example, um, uh, let's say reach down, reach down on the floor and pick up a crowbar. So let's say I reach down on the floor and pick up a crowbar. Notice this crowbar was not in this room, but one of the problems you're now gonna face is I can come in here and I can say show inventory again. Now notice the only thing it says that I'm carrying is now a crowbar. Uh, now, if I regenerate this, of course, you'll notice it <laughs> now says that I'm wearing and notice these components are a little bit more accurate to what it was. And again, I just needed to do a quick refresh there. Now, one of the problems people are gonna have here is um, let's say I wanna change my little context here. Let's say um, uh, you reach down Reach down and pick up three, uh, let's see here, um, baseballs. Let's keep it nice and simple. Um, then I'm going to say, throw one of the baseballs. <laughs> what? No, it doesn't. Cool. Uh, show inventory. Now watch what happens here. Notice we have nothing in here as far as baseballs. Um, now, if I regenerate this again, I'll just hit a retry real quickly. You're carrying one baseball. Notice that this one right here is the one baseball that I throw. If I regenerate this again, 
uh, you'll notice here that um, none of these things are accurately generated at all. Now, the problem you're gonna have here is that whenever you are playing with anything that involves inventory, I really, really recommend that you add it to the memory. So for example, uh, you're carrying a set of professional lockpicks, uh, two baseballs, and a tie, and a watch. Watch, watch, and a flashlight. Now, the reason this is important is if I come over here and run this again, you'll notice that it's going to recognize the fact that I'm carrying my baseball. It's also going to notice my uh, good lock picks. It's going to notice, of course, sort of the other items that I have. This is going to be really important if you're doing an adventure game, for example, and you have ammunition or you have like arrows that you need to keep track of, or there's some money or something that you need to do or exchange kind of a thing. These are important that you kind of add them onto the memory because this one's going to struggle a lot. You know, ChatGPT does a little bit better job with handling these kind of things. But when you're doing stuff with adventure games, if you're going to start messing with inventory, this is one of the recommended methods to kind of toss those things in here. Now, one of the cool things is if I want to adjust what happens in here, let's go ahead and I clean this all up real fast. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's clean this up and say, um, now we're going to add some memory to something that we didn't meet yet. Uh, beyond the hatch, beyond the hatch is a xenomorph waiting to attack. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'll push the button that opens it. it slide, okay, the door op slides open silently. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll tell Jack here. All right, Jack, after you. I did it again. <laughs> yeah, you better believe I say that incredulously. There's no xenomorphs. <laughs> of course I watch sci-fi movies over oh, anything it, it, interesting uh, now one of my favorite things here to, uh, suddenly <laughs> oh geez and um, that's how our character uh, comes to their silent demise actually let's fix this uh, press the button to close the hatch immediately hopefully i <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> that would have been bad so um of course what we can do here is we can take this out of the author's note and we can toss it up in here and now it becomes part of the memory remember the more things we toss into the memory the less accurate things we could do now what one of the fun things here is remember how we created that lore book entry uh what do you do for a living jack now there's no reason that he will necessarily say what he does kind of a thing here i noticed ah! There's a lore book entry. So in conclusion, uh, when you're playing with the adventure side, it requires some finagling. You know, this isn't the character AI's uh, adventure game. You know, a lot of these contexts, it's all in kind of how you tweak it and build the lore. I've seen some people build these massive, like, 40-entry lore books, which have, like, you know, and an MP5 carries 39 millimeter bullets and stuff like that. And, like, your jacket has this many pockets and, like, really gets into it. But you have to ask yourself, if you're not actually going to see it or need it in the story, there's really no point in actually going ahead and creating and putting those different components in because it's just going to be sucking up context that you could be using for other components. So as you can see, uh, Novel AI is a really cool tool. Um, like there's a lot of really nice things. I absolutely love playing with it. You can, like anything you can think of, you can basically build a story off of and run with. You know, I've done mystery novels, I've done short stories, I've done long stories, I've done poetry. And like I said, this adventure side of it is very, very fun to play with. Uh, one thing I will say is if you go up here and now flip over to Crake, uh, which is one of the ones I had, there's actually text adventure is one of the modules and you can actually fit around with these different types of presets here and actually manipulate them halfway through the story. Now, one of the cool things is these different AIs have distinctively weirder or different personalities that will actually come out in the way the story actually gets generated and what you actually see. And one of the fun parts of all of this, of course, is experimenting with what makes most sense. Enjoy.